<laughs> when I figure out how to upload frequently, I swear it is game over. I'm a mess. I had my first week at Google. I missed a homework assignment and life. And when there's a lot going on, I've learned to simplify my life wherever else I can. Try to do less where possible. And you can probably tell I'm sleeping on a mattress on the floor. My clothes are in luggage over there. And that's pretty much it. That's the room tour. And I love this. I appreciate this now so much more than I used to because when you're a new computer science student, there's this pressure to try really hard in everything and you know what I mean by this. Just walk into a career fair and look around. You will feel it. It's a stereotype of people in tech, and if this applies to you, I want you to stop trying so hard. <laughs> because this try hard mentality turns out doesn't really work that well. I wanna break down why this is the case for five areas of your career, your income, your salary growth, which is a little different, your resume, your networking, and your productivity as a software engineer. These are just my opinions. Yes, I have a lot of those, but I wish I knew this sooner. So hopefully it helps you out. Let's go. A lot of students go into CS partly for the fat stacks, six figs tech money, and that makes sense, but people want to flex on you, so they try to optimize their salary until they die. They take like a billion classes, three different majors, and then work 12 hour work days trying to get promotions. You're making like 20 to 40% more on your one salary, and then you're losing more in taxes. That's great, but you would have made more taking an easier career path in the field, and then just starting a side hustle. I don't care what you do. Could be any personal business, you could have started a YouTube channel. Kidding, kinda, but I don't make much on here because you didn't smash the like button and I'm a small YouTuber, but just by starting something, you get immediate benefits like tax deductions. When you're in your 20s, you're just constantly losing money on stuff. Like I built a PC, I got a camera, audio equipment, lights, a chair, speakers, and I can now write these off as business expenses because my business is now my name. You want proof? Check it out right down there. Hit the like button while you're at it. And I can subtract these from my taxable income so that at the end of the year, I I am taxed on less money. When you're in Silicon Valley, your tax rate is so high, that's like getting 35% off anything relevant to your personal brand. I would have bought this stuff anyway, so the dollar value per hour of just starting a channel is already pretty good even when I demonetize myself, but maybe you don't care about YouTube. Maybe you don't care about tax deductions or money. The point is, opportunity cost. Whenever you put one more hour into something, think about the hour you could have spent doing literally anything else and the value you would have gotten from that. I know people who learn coding for like one year and they start making online courses because they're sitting already on enough content for one of the most widespread demographics on the planet. People who want to learn programming and they realize this, they lock in what they have and they move on until something works out. And this makes sense. I wish I thought like this sooner because there's many ways to live life, many ways to learn things. There's a million ways to make a million dollars if you're in this for the money. Now, I'm not saying quit your job or half-ass your career. I don't want to be an internet guru yet. Um, your career and your salary are really important, but maybe there are shortcuts. So the default way to max out your salary is to spend college getting smart as fuck and then upgrade your job every year until you're a tech lead. That works, but it sounds like it takes a long time. It's probably kind of hard, so I don't like that. Instead, you can just keep applying for internships. Companies usually give their best new grad offers to returning interns, and if you're like me, and you keep running away from school, you can keep doing internships. This gives you leverage to basically increase your own market value like every four months or so. And that's how some students with a lot of experience will be making way over $200,000 their first year after school. And if you get return offers, you're done. You don't need to apply for full-time roles. Full-time interviews are so much more comprehensive than internship ones. So if you just do enough leak code as a freshman and you get the ball rolling, you can just stop trying in school after that. That's how I am gonna spend my senior year doing literally nothing. And doing nothing is statistically 100% easier than doing things. But don't you need to do a lot to get your first internship or job? Don't you need to try really hard? Well, 
kind of. You're only going to do one at a time. You only need to qualify for like one role. And in any job, you're only going to do like one type of thing. Most careers eventually converge into a niche and that can happen as soon as you want it to. I really wish that when I started college, I just Googled software engineering job, just picked the first one that looked cool and just focused on the things in the description. I could have stopped trying and pretty much most other things. But no, I thought I was way too cool for that. I wanted to be well-rounded and explore my passions for as long as I could. And if this sounds like you, maybe stop trying so hard. The tech industry isn't like college applications. No one really cares how holistically dope you are as a person. Companies know what they're looking for. Recruiters just want to fill a headcount and match people to specific roles. So specificity and relevance, in my experience, get way more attention than just being smart or educated. You know, that's the case for everything, right? You can argue for your 3.9 in your chemistry major all you want, your 20 professional development clubs, and it sounds like internet rappers bashing on the Migos for not being deep enough, okay? That's just not really what matters. I wish someone told me a while ago, find your niche. I'm trying to do this now. Like, is talking about tech careers my favorite thing in the world? Is this my whole life? No, this isn't the only thing I do, but if I just tried to look cool on YouTube and just be a very well-rounded person on here, no one would really care about my channel, which I hope isn't the case now. So networking is like the secret sauce, your magic shortcut into any industry. People hype it up, students throw it around all the time, but really networking is just building relationships with people that could help you with your career. And the only way people will help you with anything is if they genuinely want to, if they feel like it. That is it, there are no alternatives, that's all that works. But no, I wanted to be big brain computer science kid, so I tried to play the game. I tried to join frats, clubs, and support groups. I sat through PowerPoints, panelist speakers, forced small talk, and this just made me a sweaty kid with a painfully verbose elevator pitch. If that sounds like you, may I suggest stop trying so hard. I'm not saying you shouldn't do these things, I'm just saying the actual value you get from them comes from the genuine connections you make and your charisma that you develop. But you can get to these however you want, but they don't come for free. I think that's important for you to know because people will randomly message me essays basically saying, I am trying so hard, but I'm really unlucky. I need you to hook me up with an internship or help me get a job or something. And then they follow up every 12 hours with question mark. First of all, like, I'm not a recruiter. I'm just a dude. Like, what do you want me to do? Second of all, I will reply when I get around to it. But what makes you think, can you please do it, will actually make anyone want to help you more. Maybe I'm just rude for not appreciating this kind of a message. I don't know. Like, what do you think? Let me know down in the comments. Like, I know it feels good to make moves and hustle, but when you're working with people, people see straight through that and it's actually just kind of annoying, but it's hard to be aware of this when you're only seeing your side. So I really wish that some random guy on YouTube was calling me out for it. When you're trying to reach any kind of success, it's so easy to become selfish, to start treating interactions like transactions. And this is never as effective as just chilling out and trying to add value to people, trying to be helpful, be dependable, be funny. You need other people for things and people will never help you unless you give them reasons to want to. Finally, school rewards computer science students for doing things that are hard. That's why a lot of new engineers, myself included, will get carried away building things from scratch just to prove that they can. Doing things for the sake of doing something hard. Like right now, someone is putting the billionth version of the snake game on their GitHub. All the college entrepreneurs out there are probably coding up janky Tinder copies. Every summer, each fang company gets 100 copies of the same code because interns want to show off. I am definitely guilty of this and if this sounds like you, you know what I'm gonna tell you. Unless you're pushing the boundaries of science, anything you're trying to do has probably already been done for you somewhere out there. This is the only reason that I've survived internships without knowing how to code. I am a f***ing professional at copy and paste, okay? I found out that each hour I spent messaging people or just digging through a code base, even googling things, was more effective than each hour I spent coding. A lot of engineers at top tech companies know this, so if you look at their code, they're kind of just duct taping stuff together 
together, throwing together APIs, reusing components that are even labeled as deprecated, and then just getting them out the door. You realize that productivity and efficiency are way more important than being smart. And I wish someone told me this a few years ago because it would have saved me a lot of effort and a lot of time. And there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful and you want to see more, make sure you give that subscribe button down there a nice little high five and then smash the notification bell so that YouTube lets you know whenever I post a new content. Let me know what you want to see in future videos down in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.